Hello and welcome everyone, Lanhut here, and today I have another preview video for you guys from the upcoming Total War Saga title, Thrones of Britannia. If you haven't already checked out my preview videos so far, you can find them linked in the playlist in the description and comment section. So uh, while I've been away, Creative Assembly did send out early access to this, thankfully they've extended it so I had a chance to record a bit of content for you guys to take a look at the Viking Sea Kings. Now there's two factions available to play as, as Viking Sea Kings, Dublin and Suthrea. Today I'm going to be doing sort of a mini campaign Let's Play episode uh, looking at Dublin. Uh, Suthrea holds its lands in the northwest of Scotland, um, but seeing as we had our Kirken Let's Play up there, uh, last time when there was uh, preview access, I wanted to go somewhere different. So Dublin is the focus for us today. So as uh, Viking Sea Kings, they feature expedition and tribute mechanics. The expeditions, the world is yours for the taking. You can send your ships to conquer new lands and tribute. Other kingdoms pay tribute as a sign of their submission. Uh, you can get tribute from other factions to gain various bonuses. And we'll take a look at that once we're on the campaign map itself. Also, both factions benefit from immunity to seasickness and high seas attrition, uh, which I believe will benefit them because they'll be able to go into deep water um, without suffering attrition, meaning they can hopefully sort of move a bit further or uh, sort of cut across um, deep water uh, sections of the map to expand faster. Dublin's unique faction features uh, slave trade. For some, the keeping of slaves is an integral part of their culture. Gain slaves by winning battles and raiding, sacking or occupying settlements, sell them each turn and improve income by building thrall traders. Uh, Dublin also benefits from minus 15% construction cost or regions and uh, both Dublin and Sothrea uh, benefit from very strong axe infantry. Also wanted to give you guys a heads up about a discount for Thrones of Britannia. It is Europe only, uh, but if you do live in Europe, there is a 15% discount if you visit the link in the description to Games Planet and use the code THRONE5 at the checkout. That way you can save 15% off the cost of the game, bringing it down to £25.64. Uh, that's running until the 6th of May. Without further ado, let's jump on to the campaign. Okay, so we're now on the campaign map. As with my previous preview videos, I am still restricted to 10 minutes worth of content, so I'll probably only get a chance to show you the first few turns playing as Dublin. I will try and jump ahead towards the end of this mini campaign episode for you guys, just to show you the expeditions mechanic. But with further ado, let's crack on. So we have our first mission that's been issued, Humble Beginnings. If we take out the local rebels, we'll get a reward of plus 5 public order and plus 50% unit replenishment for all armies for five turns so let's crack on and do that although before we do that we can actually upgrade all of these units um, with level one weapons and armor so that'll be a benefit to our troops as we are obviously restricted on time and what I can show you we will just be auto resolving this battle it looks like we haven't taken them out in this first engagement so we'll have to chase them to the border one of their forces have fallen We'll take on warriors to give us a little bit of replenishment and we have gained some tribute by jumping forward and bopping uh, those rebels on the head and as you can see uh, they affect three main areas to start with influence, uh, unit um, upkeep cost and also a positive modifier for income from markets or regions. And we can see that for the top there, 5 out of 100, and influence, upkeep, cost reduction, and market income um, increase. Uh, modifiers all increase as we go up the tribute scale, which can be gained through diplomatic payments, battles, expeditions, technology, events, and cultural equilibrium. We've also got expeditions, and we'll gain points towards that, the maximum being 50, that's when an expedition will pop as such, and we can gain expedition points by raiding, sacking, uh, blockading, ranking up characters, getting technology and various events and finally we also have our slave trade mechanic i actually kind of wish this mechanic uh, allowed you to interact it uh, interact with it a little bit more um basically it gives you plus one public order for all regions and also a uh, increased income uh, in relation to the number of slaves you have but the slaves are automatically sold off um 
at the end of each turn. So it means that in times of war, when you're constantly gathering more and more slaves by occupying and sacking regions, you will have quite a nice extra bit of income. But in times of peace, uh, you won't benefit um, as much as you won't have as many slaves. Uh, but I was kind of hoping that you could manually go in and choose to sort of sell them um, or what have you or, or, or hoard them up as such, I guess. Um, that to me would have been a, a mechanic to see sort of fleshed out a little bit more. Anyway, let's carry on and chase these guys down, push them to the border, and hopefully finish them off. I have achieved greater rank. They can't retreat, so they will be put to the sword, and down they fall. Move up. Rebels have been killed and we've completed that mission, so we do now benefit from internal stability. We'll see this I pull this army back a little bit, and I'm also going to pop a point into my General's Quartermaster uh, skill so that we can get further campaign map movement range. I should say our starting position, obviously we have Dublin, but we also control the Isle of Man, although we're probably not going to do too much over there. Uh, I'm just going to set that cattle herd building to upgrade. Same with our minor settlement over here and our thrall market to give us extra income um, from um, our market and slaves and what have you uh, that we're gathering up there. Other than that, I think that's all we need to do for now, so we'll end the turn. So we turn on and we have the coastal conflict event that's popped up. Basically, we can demand that uh, the Brega faction to the north of us, uh, we can demand that they submit to us and bend the knee and will gain control of all their settlements, but the people will be upset, or we can take them by force, uh, which will please our people, which is what I'm going to say we're going to do. So we now have a mission being issued to own all settlements in the province of Brega, which is all of our starting province. Uh, they've moved an army to the south, southeast, so I'm going to move into the settlement down here, and I'm actually then going to recruit up some axemen, archers, and actually not that unit spheres, but these two, or those three. It probably will destroy my food surplus. It's going to cost 60 and we only have 25 surplus at the moment. But it will do for what I need it to, which is to allow us to sally out and break down this larger force. We'll declare war and go straight on in. Even though a lot of our forces are still mustering, which means they're at uh, not at full strength, it'll take a few turns for them to do that when you recruit units in Thrones of Britannia, it's still more than enough to break the force of Brega. So once again, let's put them to the sword, or rather the axe. We did lose a unit of our Eastern Axemen, but we have absolutely annihilated the entirety of their army. Various messages popping up to do that, including telling us that we're out of food, uh, rather surplus, and that we've also got a skill upgrade for our local governor, which is going to go into Scribe to give us increased income uh, for all of our regions. I'm now actually going to tell our units to merge, uh, as that will help the situation with our food, and then I'm going to get rid of the... Uh, one of the units of archers and uh, these guys as well and we should be in the positive and I'll move these guys forward so that next turn we can move in and take their regions to the north return on and we're gonna go in and take out their next settlement although I'm actually gonna go for their army so that we can catch him unless he's gonna choose to run away he's gonna choose to run away so we'll move in take the settlement and here I'm actually going to sack it and then occupy because by sacking the settlement, we'll actually get more expedition points. We're another turn on, and uh, that army that swooped on round and ran away from us last time has been dealt with by a new force that I quickly raised and now disbanded so that we don't go into the negative with our food. So I'm going to move up to Linz to finish off my conquest of this province. Again, we're going to sack it so that we get more points towards our expedition, and then we'll go straight in and occupy all this all this sacking and then occupying does cause a fair bit of uh, public order issues and uh, you will find in thrones that 
garrisoning settlements with an army doesn't seem to provide a public order bonus. It's down to characters, which I don't particularly like that. It would be nice to have um, some kind of way to manage public order by popping an army in. Anyway, we're going to jump ahead now until I've got more expedition points. I'm going to set my sights on Lagan to the south, conquer their territories, which should give us enough expedition points to set one off, and then we can take a look at how that goes uh, later on in this campaign. So we're now 16 turns into the game, and as you can see, I've expanded south with my armies, and I'm one expedition point away. So let's grab that final point by going in to Ferner here and sacking it. Expedition, the ships are ready. Your shipwrights have worked to make the longships fully seaworthy, and your skilled navigators and sailors have prepared for the upcoming voyage. Supplies have been gathered, and your most sea-hardened warriors await the call to journey to distant lands. Send the ships out on an expedition. So we'll now jump forward a turn, and we'll be able to choose where we're sending them. Okay, so we're a turn on, and we can now choose where exactly we want to send our expedition, north, east, southeast, or south. I'm going to send them south for this expedition. Uh, now, they're probably will be another two or three uh, parts to this event chain as such, which I'll have to skip just so that I can fit it all in in this video. So we'll now jump forward to take a look at the uh, result of this expedition. Will our Vikings be successful? Will they come back with plunder and loot? Or will they have met defeat? So we're now 26 turns into our campaign and the expedition has uh, been resolved. Some little gain. It has been successful. Um, so for five turns, uh, we'll benefit from plus one public order all regions and also we'll get uh, 500 to our treasury. So uh, it seems to have gone okay. We haven't really brought back that much loot. Uh, we have the option to either raid the settlement that we came upon in the end or try and vassalize them. I chose to raid them and plunder them for their uh, resources. So you should have, as the player, quite a few different options to use these expeditions to hopefully uh, further your faction uh, to greatness in the campaign. Uh, but that's all we've got time for from the gameplay side of things. So I'm just going to leave you with a few more of my thoughts before we wrap this video up for now. So while I haven't had that much time with the Viking Sea Kings, as I literally just got back from Sweden the other day and I've just jumped straight into checking out this preview access, I have enjoyed what I've played so far. Again, what I really feel that Thrones of Britannia does well is that it does um, sort of, not force, but it does draw the player in to invest more time into the campaign map side of gameplay. I will, if there's time, try and do another video uh, where I'll do a land battle and I'll take a look at how they feel in this current preview build of the game. I do feel that on the whole the campaign map side of things has been the focus for Thrones of Britannia for Creative Assembly to add in some mechanics although it is definitely worth noting they have removed some mechanics you know the forced march isn't in there ambush stance in there there's no uh, army traditions there's no provincial edicts um, all stuff that I kind of feel would have helped add to that campaign gameplay especially when there seems to have been a lot more emphasis and focus uh, not just on the kind of role playing side of investing in your character but just deeper features into the campaign in some areas but it's a shame to see that other features have been made uh, more shallow. I feel that, that slavery system for Dublin could have been a lot more deeper and meaningful and I don't know if that just reflects that this isn't uh, meant to be a brand new massive Total War game. It's a Total War saga game, essentially a standalone expansion title. Um, so yeah, I, I still in a way think that not just myself but many players out there in the community are struggling to fully grasp what Thrones of Britannia is trying to be or trying to offer and I think that's only something that I can kind of fully clarify um, not just for myself but hopefully you guys as well uh, with longer format videos once the game comes out or once Creative Assembly allow me to record longer videos. Uh, anyway, as I said, I will try and do a battle video as well and share my thoughts on that. I'll talk a bit about performance and things as well. And finally, one big thing as well, which I really should have mentioned at the start of this video, uh, Thrones of Britannia has actually been delayed. It was meant to come out on the 19th of April, it is now coming out on the 3rd of May. Uh, Creative Assembly, have they've done a blog post, I'll try and link it in the description comment section, but primarily this has been a response to a lot of the 
feedback, both from sort of early access um, reviewers, YouTubers, what have you, and also from the comments that the community has been sharing on the various preview videos, pointing out various bits and pieces that didn't seem quite right, or asking for further explanation or development on things. Uh, notably, it seems like Creative Assembly are focusing a lot on tweaking battles, um, so we'll have to wait and see uh, how um, that affects the game. But uh, an extra two weeks, essentially, until the game comes out. I'm all for it. I think, you know, if they realize they need more time, especially to make battles better. Because uh, as I've said before, it does seem like the campaign map side of things has been given priority for Thrones. I think the battles have been left a little bit wanting. So hopefully that extra time will, uh, will tweak them up a bit. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this preview. Obviously, thanks to Creative Assembly for giving me early access and for extending it because I was away when this was in initially meant to go out. Um, I hope you guys still found this useful. And if you have any questions um, or thoughts about Thrones, then let me know down in the comment section and I'll try and do a follow-up video to this or, or maybe next time I get a chance to speak with the Creative Assembly devs, I'll pass along uh, both mine and your feedbacks. But anyway, until the next one, I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, take part on the Legion. Check out my affiliates and sponsors, Games Planet, Overclockers UK, QT, and MSI. Till the next one, ciao for now.